Good. Following that wonderfully informative speech is Miss Sherry Levitin. In 1996, Ms. Levitin founded the Sherry Levitin Group. Ms. Levitin is one of 15 sales experts premiered in a Salesforce documentary film, Story of Sales. She has also helped her clients create a $3 billion increased revenue. Ms. Levitin has been named in the top 20 influencers globally. Her now global company operates in over 40 countries and five continents. Ms. Levitin inspires transformative change and is a keynote speaker. Not only that, but she's a best-selling author of her book, Heart and Cell, which she has 50 free copies to give away. Ms. Levitin is achieving her goal of seeking, seeing personal transformation through learning and development. Ms. Levitin enjoys having her clients increase sales without losing their soul. Please help us welcome Ms. Sherry Levitin for her speech, Rehumanizing the Sales Process. Good morning. I don't speak Tamil, but I certainly can feel the passion, even not knowing the words. Thank you for having me here. I want you to imagine for a moment, it's 1906, and you have the opportunity to meet my grandmother, Helen. Now, Helen walked, she says, 10 miles to get to school every day. Why? Because back then, you had to go to where the knowledge was. Fast forward several years later, my father, Lloyd, we grew up in San Francisco, spent $942 on a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. Because back then, you had to actually pay for the knowledge. From where do we get our knowledge today? Well, everywhere, it's in your back pocket, right? They call it a cell phone, but we all know it's a supercomputer. We can download every song ever made. We can listen, we, we can read every book ever created. Neuroscientists tell us that we've created five times as much information in the last two years as in all of humankind. Our challenge today isn't accessing information, it's filtering it. And it's the same for our customers. In fact, there's so much information today, it's become devalued. Everybody has it. If you think about it, Alexa has information. I have Alexa, I programmed her. Every morning I ask her, Alexa, Alexa, on the shelf. Who's better looking than myself? She says, you are, Sherry. The problem is, she's lying. And she doesn't care. Our competitive advantage as entrepreneurs is to do everything technology can't when it comes to selling our products. I find an awful lot of entrepreneurs spend time creating products, but they don't think as much about selling their products to the new consumer. So what I'm gonna do in the next 12 minutes is share a proven formula for today's customers that you can bring back to your sales teams and engage in yourselves. And I call it the call method. To be everything Alexa isn't with your customers, and yes, that's me in India, my favorite, favorite adventure. Let's see if this goes forward. There we go. The call method. Today we must connect emotionally to our customers. We must ask questions that get to the heart of why people buy. We must listen and not only listen with our heads, but listen with our hearts to the emotion behind the words. And then we must link that information and show our customers a brighter future because only humans, not technology, can imagine a better tomorrow. So before we begin, I want to ask everybody here a quick question. I want you to get ready to raise your hands. <laughs> get ready. What's more important if you had to choose? You need both competency 
or knowing your product, or empathy, knowing your customer. This is sticky here. <laughs> there we go. Competency or empathy. How many, if you had to pick just one, would say competency? Can I see a show of hands? Knowing your product. Okay, yeah, raise your hand. Hi, raise your hand. Great. How many, uh, look around the room, how many of you, if you had to pick one, would say empathy, knowing your customer? Wow, look around the room. Well, you're both right. It was a trick question. Harvard Business Review tells us that competency and empathy are the two most important attributes to influence, but the sequence matters. Several years ago, my husband decided he was going to replace what we lovingly called his shopping cart of a car. It was a 10-year-old Prius. So he decided he would buy a truck. He called the dealer, and as we're on our way to the dealership, he says to me, now, Sherry, just so you know, I'm not buying anything today. I know you're emotional. I'm analytical. We're not buying a thing today. I said, okay, no problem. So we get down to the dealership, and out comes the salesperson, Jared. He's a Canadian guy, nice-looking, middle-aged guy. He takes a look at my husband, and he says, I hope you don't mind, but i like to know a little bit about the customers that I serve. So I looked you up on LinkedIn. He said, and I just want to thank you. I know you're the past president of the National Ability Is Center, and you help children with autism. He said, my own son has autism and went through the program. Well, for the next 25 minutes, they talked about autism, they talked about research, they talked about cures. And as we walked out onto the car lot, my husband took a look at me and he says, I think he might have what I'm looking for. We hadn't even seen a truck and he bought it. Now, Jared, the car dealer, knew everything about cars. He knew the history of cars. He knew the horsepowers of cars. He knew the future of self-driverless trucks, but he knew something much more important. He knew my husband, Lee. We must lead with empathy. Yet, unfortunately, too often when we're talking about our products and our services, we lead with competency. You've seen it happen. We give these great product descriptions. Salespeople that I talk to all over the world, they suffer from a terrible disease called premature demonstration syndrome. 58% of all salespeople sell too soon. We connect with people on LinkedIn and we want to tell them all about our products instead of first finding out what's important to them. So in the connecting step, what we need to remember is before we sell or promote anything, are we connecting with our customers? Because empathy gets you in the door. It's reliability, competency, and integrity that keep you there. The next step, and this is, works in any sales situation for any entrepreneur in any organization, after we connect, we need to ask. We need to ask before we promote our products and services. You know, several years ago, I don't know if any of you saw it, there was an article in the New York Times. It was, it was 36 questions to fall in love. The premise was, if you ask 36 questions that help someone else get progressively more vulnerable, they'll fall in love with you. So I'm thinking, 36 questions could cause a total stranger to fall in love with me? How many questions would it take for a customer to buy from me? Well, turns out, research shows, it's not the number of questions we ask, but it's the types of questions we ask. There's three types of questions we must ask our customers. Number one, skin questions. Skin questions are surfacy. Skin questions reveal the facts. 
Things like, how big is your company? How long have you been in operations? Information you could find on LinkedIn. 80% of all sales teams stop there. Better sales organizations dig deeper. They break through to the bones. Bone questions reveal problems, inefficiencies, um, terrible cultures. Bone questions uncover customers' concerns, what keeps them up at night. But it's the best salespeople in the world, the best sales te teams in the world, that break through the skin, through the bones, and get inside the heart. Heart questions begin with why. Skin questions and bone questions are who, what, where, when. But the best salespeople in the world uncover the emotional motivators of the customer. A friend of mine works at Adobe. She said she got the biggest deal she had ever gotten because when she talked to her customer, who was in Texas, she asked him what was going on in his business. But then she asked him if she solved his problem, how it would help him. And he said yes, I can hear you. he could actually move back to Austin if the problem were solved and spend more time with his children. So are we asking skin, bone, and heart questions? The third part of the call method is to listen. Are we really listening to our customers? After we connect, after we ask questions and find out information, are we listening well enough that we know what not to say? Are we listening to the emotion behind the words? And once we've done that, finally, what we need to do that technology could never do is link that information to our customers' dreams. And when we link, are we telling them how it works? Or are we sharing with them how they'll feel when they engage with our products and services? Because I can tell you, the best do just that. Several years ago, 20 years ago, when I first started my training company, I had been working, I was with a big hotel company down in Mexico called Fiesta Americana. And after two weeks, I was exhausted. So I decided to treat myself to a massage. I walked in upstairs and the woman behind the counter was very conservative. She had her hair pulled back in a bun. I said, can you tell me about your massages? She says, yes, they're $65. You must book them at least 24 hours in advance. We don't take MasterCard or Visa. Please fill out four pages of paperwork and book your massage. I'm thinking, these facts, this doesn't sound very interesting to me. So I left. I thought, eh, I'll have a little tequila or something. That'll help my bag. So I'm walking down the streets of Cancun, and I see a little shop. And on it is a sign, and it says Garden of Eden Massages. I can, maybe I'll walk in there. So I walk in, I smell the smell of lavender oil, I hear this beautiful music. There's an Eastern European woman behind the counter. I said, can you tell me about your massages? She says, tonight, we have Eduardo. She says, Eduardo? He has it, the magic hands. He take the oil and rub it all over your body and make you tingle. Have you had Eduardo? I said, no. She says, I don't believe. Eduardo, he usually book up months in advance. He has an opening in 10 minutes. You want? I said, yes. So I had it work. The point is, the first woman told me how it worked. The second woman got into my heart and shared with me how I'd feel. When you think about your products and services that you're promoting, are you connecting with your customers? Are you asking questions? Are you listening? And are you linking what they want to the emotional benefits of your products or services.
And before I conclude, I want to ask everybody really quickly to take out a piece of paper. And I want you to write down what you would consider the three most important things in your life. One, two, three. Most important things in your life. So just out of curiosity, I'm looking at a beautiful room of people. How many of you wrote down family? Lovely. Look around the room. How many of you wrote down spirituality, something that has to do with your spirituality? Great. How many of you wrote down health and wellness? Can I see a show of hands? Look around the room. How many of you wrote down something about success or entrepreneurship? Can I see a show of hands? And how many of you wrote down the product that you're selling? Your software, your product. Here's one of the things I want to leave you with. We can't change someone's life priorities in a sales conversation. What we can do is connect, ask questions, listen, and link their priorities to our products and services. So my call to you when you go back to your teams, your sales teams, is that you make sure to connect from the heart with them. Ask them what's important to them in their lives. Get to know their inner world so you can affect their outer worlds. Listen with your heart and link your opportunity to a brighter future. Thank you very much.